Hello, my name is Anjani, and today I am talking about Tantra, yoga, subtle energy, and ways we can use feminine and masculine energy within the body for creation. So, first of all, Tantra is not what you likely think. Uh, there was a couple of guys back in the, I want to say the 1800s, maybe early 1900s, who brought Tantra to the West in a very perverted form. And it really wasn't anything that was actually Tantra. It was not actually any of the Tantric teachings. Um, yeah, so in, in Tantra, it's, it's not fully sexuality. And I say fully because part of being a human has to do with sexuality. And Tantra is about a human, a human being, and how to work with subtle energy. So sexuality is part of the human experience. Therefore, Tantra is not negating sexuality. But it doesn't, you know, I haven't studied, um, and I don't read Sanskrit, and I haven't translated any manuals, but I have read loads of of manuscripts and, and um, thesis papers and from people who do read Sanskrit and who do translate Sanskrit on the subjects of Tantra and the history of Tantra, where it comes from, what it's for, how to do it. And I have found tiny bits that have to do with sexuality. And the things that, that do mention sexuality are absolutely surprising and shocking to me because they have nothing to do with mating. <laughs> um, so, and of course, there are some rituals that I found for um, sexuality, but everything has to do with cultivating life force energy within the body and having this merging or union of the divine self with the individual self. Yoga means union, merging, you know, your own, your own little piece of consciousness with the big piece of, con with the, not the big piece of it, but with the one. So through all this study uh, and experience of Tantra yoga, I start to question what I'm doing in my work with astrology and why do I feel so drawn to working with astrology and the answers that I got today in my writing had to do with knowing who we are so that's probably the the bottom layer of starting anything any spiritual path any path in general we need to know who we are and if I just say to you that you are God, that you are the encasement of a walking embodiment of the divine, you're probably going to think I'm crazy. You won't believe it, most likely. And even for myself, who I, I believe it to an extent, but 100% belief is what you need to be able to really have that spark of realization happen. 99% belief isn't belief. You know, you have to fully believe it, which is where the experiences come in, why we do ritual, why we have practices, meditation practices, breathing exercises. Because within that, you'll have the experience that gives you that last 1% of belief, which moves you into a whole new category. That 1%, you know, it, it's a really important. That 1% is really important. So the astrology helps us to um, learn more about who we are, not by taking a chart and saying this is who you are, but by giving us a place to go. Like, okay, this uh, relates to my lineage and, you know, how, how does that describe? How can I? So you're asking yourself these questions that get you closer to the truth about who you really are, because now you're shaving away what has been overlaid onto you 
by your parents and your church and your, you know, uh, sisters and brothers and what what we have in our upbringing which is nice but kind of gives us tells us who we are informs us and astrology um, gives us a way to integrate and digest our life experiences and you know help you to write your own so there we go. Ne next thing is how can we use, wow, I don't know how I just went to astrology. I'm, I'm on Tantra. I'm on um, feminine energy, masculine energy, and how to use those energies within the body. You know, this is an, there, is, there is no separation for me. This is one of my biggest challenges. It's like, I really do experience the world the way that I talk. And when you watch the videos, you'll see it's like, it's a big glob and we, you know, to talk about it and teach it, I need to separate it and put it into these little categories. So um, within my book that I have created, uh, Creating Your Own Mythology, there is this whole section on sexuality, personal magnetism, and the tantric uh, teachings are a lot about um, within the body, those, the, the forces of heat and cold and all the different polarities, which is an, another thing that I do a lot with my astrology readings, is working with the polarities to create personal magnetism. So within the masculine and the feminine, um, I just made a video about the descriptions of masculine and feminine, yin and yang, and Shiva Shakti from the, um, the Vedic traditions and the way that, that they're using feminine and masculine energy and how they differ in the yin and yang. So what we want to do is be able to merge these energies within the body and circulate energy. This is a way of creating energy. Um, so one simple way to do this, uh, something that I work with a lot, is a breathing exercise. I don't know if there's a name for this because it's sort of... Um, came through meditation and you know I feel like my whole life is a spiritual practice and my whole life is a yoga practice you could say um, dreaming waking doing things practicing things working with people's bodies and reading astrology so um, if you've heard of this breathing exercise a technique Please let me know the name of it. I don't know. I don't know if it is a thing, but it's something that I work with. So basically what you do is, um, you know how the, the lungs are right, I mean, yeah, the lungs are encased within the rib cage. Right underneath the, um, the front of your, your ribs, this is where the diaphragm is. When you inhale, the diaphragm pushes downward. So this is apana. This is the downward moving energy. Um, there's five different types of prana. So a lot of people who are into yoga and know about yoga just say prana. But the energy moves in different directions in the body. And this is very, very crucial and important to know if you are a yoga practitioner, um, especially if you're a yoga teacher. It's really vital. So when you inhale the energy moves downward. So what we're going to do is on the inhalation, bring, bringing the oxygen into the body, filling the lungs up, diaphragm moves down. You're going to imagine that space right above your pelvic bowl, which is the second chakra area, which has to do with water. You're going to imagine that space filling up on the inside with energy. So on the inhale, Filling the lower belly up, gathering all your energy right there. On the exhale, that energy travels up the spine and up into the crown of the head. So that's the exhalation. So that basic, very basic. Inhaling, feeling the lower belly. Exhaling, imagining the energy coming up. And to me, it sort of sits right back in this area. And then you can do anything with that. When I'm in a Reiki session, I'll do that breathing pattern and then have the energy coming out through my hands. Um, when I'm, you know, you, 
in in a sexual experience with a partner you can imagine doing this breathing exercise because that okay here we go so that sexual energy it, it basically what's happening is that uh, okay I am a woman and I like men so I'm talking about this from my perspective I'm sure that you know somebody who is same sex relationships they're going to have their own different way of talking about this um, but from my experience what happens when there's a combination with another person there um, because you know I can do this on my own this is I've perfected this I feel like I've perfected this to a point that um, I would even say that I'm like 90 percent of the time on the verge of an orgasmic sensation within my body because that this is sensuality to me where I am when I breathe all this energy is moving within my body and I am always energized and magnetic and I do healing work in the healing arts I do um, a lot of body work and I'm, I'm sparky all the time there's sparks flying off of me you know I am magnetic and I work on that that's something that's not just I, you know, I didn't just be born and just be, I mean, I guess we all were born and we were magnetic, but through life we get shut down, get water poured on us in every which direction and we lose our magnetism and we become dull and half dead, you know, and it's it really breaks my heart to see people like that. So I'm talking about this because this is something that isn't taught to us and may be uncomfortable to think about or to you know to work with so anyway you can do this on your own and here we go I'm gonna talk about sexuality so when a man and a woman are with each other they not necessarily having sex but just caressing each other just you know that um, mm, that feeling of being attracted having an attraction with somebody and having your body being um, stimulated sensually you know touch looking in the eyes of the beloved Th those feelings of fireworks just blowing up within your body doing this breathing exercise that I'm talking about everything gets heightened and what we want to do is have huh, kundalini energy which is that um, again, in, in the Vedas, resides in the pelvis, in the, the root chakra, resides right there around the, where the sacrum is, in the base of the spine. The sacrum is that, that part of your tailbone that's uh, not your tailbone. The sacrum is that little kind of bony prominence that's in your lower back, and your tailbone is just right below that. So this is where in in the Vedas, Kundalini lives there. So you want to be able to activate that energy and not just activate it and have it running amok in your hips and your pelvis. Um, this is where the belly dance movements also come in very handy for helping to move that energy around and liberate it from where it is. A lot of lower back pain is from kundalini, from life force energy that doesn't know where to go. It doesn't have a place, it's blocked, you know, all these kind of things. So we wanna have that energy rise up and move up um, and there's nothing to do. You don't have to try to make that happen. It happens when it's time for it to happen. And often times there's blockages in the body and things that are in the way that and it's fine because that's where you are in your life. And I, I don't go into somebody's body and be like, oh, we got to get rid of, we got to clear this. And we got, it's not like that to me. To me, it's like this is here for a reason and it's not my place to just try to move it or burn it or violet flame it or, you know, reiki it away. That's not the way that I work. Um, so now... I made a video about this, but I'm going to, since we're getting into the sexuality piece, I'm going to talk about it again. Within the woman's womb, her reproductive 
process is fire in nature. It is fiery heat, the blood from her, you know, from her pelvis. That's her, Kundalini Shakti. From the man, his his reproductive situation is um, watery. It is sensitive. It is fluid. It is stabilizing. It is the plasmic sort of um, substance. So when we're um, and, and then the other thing is that we have this within us. We, you know, whether you're a, a man or a woman, you have fire and you have ice. You have the polarity within you. And in what I'm looking at in um, sort of my mind's eye is that image of the spine. I used to have a diagram right back behind me, but I don't have it anymore. But there's the spine. And the fire is down here, the kundalini. And up here is the, you know, the little... Shiva has a moon and it's sort of the ice and when this fire rises up it starts to heat up the ice melt the ice and there's little drops little drops of nectar that come down and sort of feed the pineal gland feed the the glands in the head pituitary and pineal gland live there and we are merging that uh, liquid coolness with the fire bringing them together into the, we could say into the heart space, prana, circulating energy within the body. So when you're with somebody that you're attracted to and you're having this experience, that can happen naturally on its own, but even better if you're conscious of it and you're, you know, working with somebody in that way. It's amazing, you know, what an amazing thing to be able to do. So I'll go ahead and end this video here before I get too carried away talking about sexual energy. Uh, I will end with saying one more time, all energy is sexual in nature. So we have had this huge split and divide from, oh, my spirituality and oh, my sexuality. Spirituality and sexuality cannot be separate. Um... Furthermore, your spiritual life cannot be separated from your sexual life. Your spiritual life is not se separated from your your everyday life. You know, this they're one thing. It's it's one. And yoga means union. If you want to have union, you want to, you know, be practicing yoga, it doesn't just mean that your your chakrasana is good or that your you know, you're able to do the full splits or that you, you know, it doesn't, yoga is union. Yoga is life, basically, where um, it, it's not, if, so basically what I'm saying, you don't have to ever go to a yoga studio to be doing yoga, to be, consider yourself a yogin or a yogini. You are experiencing life, therefore if you're doing it consciously and doing this um, work with yourself, you are a yogin or a yogini. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it made sense um, or stirred up some questions for yourself or for me. Um, I do answer my messages and I do read the comments. So let me know if you have any. Thank you so much. I look forward to connecting with you soon.